Jesus said that to his disciples when they were sleeping in Gethsemane. The spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. The flesh is very strong to commit sin. The flesh is very strong to get angry. The flesh is very strong, strong to lust after women, very strong to love money, very strong to be selfish and evil towards others, but very weak when it comes to obey God and to be pure. The flesh, the spirit is willing, is the words of Jesus, but the flesh is weak. So don't say that it's because I'm weak that that brother can overcome but I can't. No. There is only one reason when you sin. It is because the grace of God was not upon you at that time. Well, now the question is, does God arbitrarily put his grace on some and not upon others? No. There's some type, some people who teach that type of doctrine that God sort of picks somebody and says, okay, you're going to heaven and the others are not. That's not true. Because if God did that, he'd be terribly unjust. No, there is a reason why the grace of God is upon some people. And that is written in scripture. That's the same reason why the grace of God was upon Jesus. Turn with me to James chapter 4. The answer to everything for our spiritual life is found in the word of God. Every single thing. Like I said, it is like 2 plus 2 is 4. James chapter 4 and verse 6. Therefore, he give, but he gives greater grace. For to whom does he give greater grace? James 4, 6. God is opposed to the proud. But he gives grace, we can say, only to the humble. And he always gives grace to the humble. That you can be sure of. So how did Jesus get grace all the time? Because he was always humble. Why don't you get grace all the time? Because you're not always humble. Face up to it. You may think you're humble, but you're not. And the proof of it is that you sin. The proof of it is that you get angry. The proof of it is that you lust with your eyes. The proof of it is that you love money more than you love God. The proof of it is that you murmur, you complain, you are not trusting God in a difficult situation. You cannot love your enemies. Not because they are bad, because you are not humble. How could Jesus love his enemies? Not as God. I wish I could demolish this wrong concept that the devil has put in your minds that Jesus overcame as God. I believed it for 16 years and all those 16 years I was defeated. My excuse was always, he was God, I'm not. But one day when God demolished that false idea from my mind and taught me the truth that what the Bible says, if I say I'm a Christian, 1 John chapter 2 verse 6, if anyone says he abides in Christ, he must walk as Jesus walked, without sinning. When I faced up to it, faced up, faced up to it, and I said, Lord, I want to know the secret. Remove from my mind all the wrong ideas and concepts that the devil has put in it for years. And I don't care if there's, I really said this to God, I don't care if there's a single Christian on earth who doesn't believe it. I'll believe it if your word says so. That's what changed my life. Till then I was believing what every Christian around me was telling me. But that day I started to read the Bible. You know, all those 16 years, nobody ever told me these, these two simple truths. If grace is over you, you will not sin. Romans 6.14, nobody ever told me that. I could have found it out in the Bible myself. But, uh, so I don't know, somehow I missed it. I read it, but it never took it seriously. And secondly, nobody ever told me that the only way to get grace is to humble yourself. And if you humble yourself, there's no partiality with God, you'll get it. There was always an excuse for my sin. 
But that day, the, all my excuses disappeared. I didn't get victory immediately because bad habits take a long time to go. But I started the path of victory and my life changed completely, completely 46 years ago. My dear brothers and sisters, there is a life God wants you to live is way above what you're living right now. And the secret is to know the grace of God in your life. It doesn't matter if you are the worst criminal on earth and the greatest sinner on earth, you can overcome. You only need to be willing to humble yourself. James said that and in 1 Peter 5 it's repeated. You know, I've often thought about it. Why does God repeat a statement a second time? I think it's because you read it carelessly. God knows some people read the Bible carelessly. So you miss it the second time, he wants to catch you the second time. You miss it the first time, he wants to catch you the second time and say, hey, listen, the only reason you don't get grace is because you're not humble. No other reason. You may think you're humble, but you're not. And the proof is you're defeated by sin. So 1 Peter 5, verse 5, God is opposed to the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. 